This is an introduction to trigonometry, covering the definitions and evaluations with the sine and cosine functions. And we're going to start by talking about the unit circle. The unit circle is the circle centered at the origin with radius 1, and since the radius is one unit, we're calling it the unit circle. So that's the circle x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So what this is saying is that for every point on this circle, if you take the x value and square it, and you add it to the y value squared, you're going to get 1. So for example, show that the point negative 1 half comma radical 3 over 2 is on the unit circle. x is equal to negative 1 half, y is equal to radical 3 over 2. So what we want to do is square the x and square the y, add the 2, and see if it equals 1. Negative one-half quantity squared is a positive one-fourth. Radical three over two quantity squared is going to be three over four. And one-fourth plus three-fourths does equal one. So we've shown that this point is on the unit circle. Now let's talk about the definitions of sine t and cosine t. For any real number t, Cosine t and sine t are defined to be the x and y coordinates, respectively, of the point on the unit circle that is reached by moving t units along the circle. And we're talking about counterclockwise movement from the point 1, 0. So we're starting here, and if we measure whatever number t we have, if we measure t units along the circle, wherever we end up, the x-coordinate of that point is cosine t, and the y-coordinate of that point is sine t. That's how we are defining sine and cosine of a real number t. And notice that the circumference of the circle is 2 pi, since the formula for circumference of a circle is c equals 2 pi r, and the radius in this case is 1. So traveling a distance of t equals 2 pi gets us all the way around the circle. And based on that, we have these other values for t that are important for us. Going halfway around the circle is going to be t equals pi. A quarter of the way around, t equals pi over 2. Three quarters of the way around would be 3 pi over 2. And for example, an eighth of the way around a circle, which would be one quarter of the way around the top half, is pi over four. Similarly, if we take that pi for the top half of the circle and divide it into three parts, going a third of the way around the top of the circle would be pi over three, or a sixth of the way around the top of the circle would be pi over six. And these are some common values that you see with trig evaluations. Now, to make a relationship between the value of t along the circle that we were just talking about and the angle made by the ray through the point cosine t sine t, we define radian angle measure to have the same value as t. So in other words, we're now calling this angle pi radians and this angle pi over 2 radians, and this angle 3 pi over 2 radians, and this angle pi over 4 radians, here pi over 3 radians, and here pi over 6 radians. We know that traveling t equals pi around the circle, we're traveling 180 degrees in angle measurement. Well, now we're defining radian measure so that in radians, this angle is the same as this distance around the circle. So here we have t equals pi radians. And in general, if we're traveling t units along the circle, our angle is going to measure t radians. And then the point along the circle is cosine t comma sine t. And this angle measure always starts on the positive x-axis. You're always starting here along the positive x-axis. So let's take a look at some common angle measures for trigonometry. When we use pi over 4, we can think about taking this top pi and dividing it into four parts. 
So this is going to be 1 pi over 4, and then 2 pi over 4, which reduces to pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and then 4 pi over 4, which reduces to pi, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, which reduces to 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 4, and then 8 pi over 4, which reduces to 2 pi. Similarly, we can talk about incrementing in pi over 6. So we're starting by taking this entire unit of pi, the top half of the circle, and dividing it into 6 parts. That gives us this initial angle here of pi over 6. And so going up by the same amount, we're getting 2 pi over 6, or pi over 3, then 3 pi over 6, or pi over 2, 4 pi over 6, or 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, and 6 pi over 6, or pi. 7 pi over 6, 8 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, 10 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, and 12 pi over 6. And it's important to have an understanding of these values along the unit circle because you're going to be asked to make trig evaluations at all of these angles. And so it's really important to know where that point lies on the unit circle and what that angle looks like. So now, for example, we understand that sine of 2 pi over 3 is the y coordinate here. This is the angle 2 pi over 3 radians or 120 degrees, right, because this is the distance 2 pi over 3 units. And so we know that by definition, sine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be the y coordinate here. But how do we know what that value is? Well, we're going to compute a few basic trig evaluations, memorize them, and then learn how to use them to find many more trig evaluations. So essentially, we want to fill in this table and then memorize these values, or at least memorize how to find the values. So we want sine and cosine values for t, the angle in radians, 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. And knowing these values, we're going to be able to get trig evaluations at all of these values that we see along the circles here. And some of these values are easy from the unit circle. So for example, looking at t equals 0, that means we're not traveling anywhere from the point 1, 0. The angle is 0. We know this is the point 1, 0. And we know that the x-coordinate must be cosine of 0, and the y-coordinate must be sine of 0. So that tells us cosine of 0 is 1, and sine of 0 is 0. Similarly, for t equals pi over 2, it's a 90 degree angle here, we know that we're at the point 0, 1. So 0 must be cosine of pi over 2, and 1 must be sine of pi over 2. So now we have these values for our table, but we do need to compute some more. And for the others, we're going to use right triangles. So let's take a look at pi over 4. Here's my angle of pi over 4 radians, that's 45 degrees. And what I want to do here is make a right triangle. Now I know that the hypotenuse of my triangle is 1 because that's the radius of the circle. And this is the unit circle, so I know the radius is equal to 1. Now from this point, I'm dropping down. And we know that that distance is the y-coordinate of this point. That's the height of the point. So that must be sine of pi over 4. That's the y-coordinate. And similarly, the distance here, that's in red, that's the x-coordinate, that must be cosine of pi over 4. So we're trying to find the x and y coordinates here. We're trying to find these two sides of this triangle. And what do we know? We know that the hypotenuse is 1, and we have a 45 degree angle here. And we know that x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 because that's the equation of the circle, and also because of the Pythagorean theorem. So this triangle looks like this. We've got a 45 degree angle here and a 90 degree angle here. That must mean this is also 45 degrees. And so we have an isosceles triangle. That tells us these two sides are equal. That means x equals y in this case. 
So x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. We can say x squared plus x squared is equal to 1 since x equals y. So 2x squared is equal to 1. Dividing both sides by 2, x squared is equal to 1 half. And taking the square root, we have x is equal to the positive or negative square root of 1 half. So that's positive negative 1 over radical 2. And if we rationalize, that's radical 2 over 2 here. So now we have x equals positive or negative radical 2 over 2. And since x is representing a distance for us, we're going to choose the positive value. And so x is equal to radical 2 over 2. Remember that x here is the cosine of pi over 4. So cosine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. And we know that x is equal to y in this case. So y is equal to radical 2 over 2 as well, and that tells us sine of pi over 4 is equal to radical 2 over 2. So again, we started with this pi over 4 on the unit circle. We sketched in our right triangle, which made use of the lengths x and y, which we realized are equal. And so we were able to find x and y to be radical 2 over 2. And that gives us the cosine and sine values for pi over 4. So now our table looks like this. We're getting somewhere. Let's take a look at t equals pi over 6. Same idea, we're making a right triangle. But now look at what we have. We have a side length of 1 here for our hypotenuse given by our radius. We have pi over 6 angle here, which is 30 degrees. And so the opposite angle must be 60 degrees. And because 30 is half of 60, notice that we have half of this triangle. This big triangle has a 60 degree angle, so it's equilateral, and that means its sides are all the same. So this is side length 1, this is side length 1, this must also be side length 1. Which tells us the blue side we're looking for, the y value, is equal to 1 half, since it's half of the triangle here, so it's half of that distance. So we know that y is equal to 1 half, that represents the sine of pi over 6. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Great, what's x? What's this distance here? Let's use the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus 1 half squared is equal to 1 squared. So we have x squared plus 1 quarter is equal to 1 x squared is equal to 3 quarters. Taking the square root, we get x is equal to positive or negative radical 3 quarters, or positive or negative radical 3 over 2. Again, since x is a distance, we choose the positive value, and so x is equal to radical 3 over 2, and that tells us cosine of pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2. And so now we have these values for our table. And a very similar calculation is going to give us the values for pi over 3. We're going to have the same equilateral triangle, but we're going to have it upright instead of on its side. And so the calculations are all the same. Now we have cosine value of 1 half, and then the sine value is going to be radical 3 over 2. And so now we have all of the trig evaluations we wanted to start with. And so on the unit circle, what does that tell us? We're in the first quadrant here, and it gives us the x and y coordinates for all of these points along the unit circle. These are our important points for our trig evaluations. And now that we have these trig evaluations, these x and y coordinates, by symmetry, we can take that all around the unit circle. For example, looking at pi over 6 versus 11 pi over 6, by symmetry we know that the x value is exactly the same and the y value is just negated. So cosine of 11 pi over 6 is radical 3 over 2, sine of 11 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. Similarly for 3 pi over 4, we're using symmetry with the values we have for pi over 4. We know that the x value is now negated and the y value stays exactly the same. 
So we know that cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative radical 2 over 2. And sine of 3 pi over 4 is positive radical 2 over 2. And I just wrote down a couple more examples here. Sine of 2 pi over 3, that was our original question. Sine of 2 pi over 3, that's the y coordinate here. That's a positive radical 3 over 2. And for example, cosine of 5 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4 is down here. Cosine is the x coordinate. That's negative radical 2 over 2. So once we determined these values, we were able to use symmetry to get them all around the circle. And now we have our trig evaluations at all of the angles we're interested in. But there's one more thing that I want to mention. We can also talk about negative t values. And we measure these by moving clockwise around the circle. So for example, we were talking about t being pi over 4 is going up pi over 4 units along the circle. We could talk about t equals negative pi over 4 by moving down pi over 4 units along the circle. And so here we're at the angle t equals negative pi over 4. And its trig evaluations are exactly the same as those for 7 pi over 4 because really you're at the same point along the unit circle. I wouldn't say that the angles are equal, but I would say that their trig evaluations are the same. Because 7 pi over 4 really talks about this large angle, and negative pi over 4 talks about this smaller angle. But their trig evaluations are exactly the same because they take you to the same point on the unit circle. And so for the points that are listed here, cosine of negative pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2. Sine of negative pi over 4 is negative radical 2 over 2. And for negative 5 pi over 6, cosine of negative 5 pi over 6 is negative radical 3 over 2. And sine of negative 5 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. And so this has been a brief introduction to trigonometry to help you understand the definitions of sine and cosine and how to make basic trigonometric evaluations.